I'm going to start with my, with my view of myself, Patrick. Yeah, you're all Like I will be right. Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Aurelio Del Muro. I am a sculptor, uh, uh, I, a brass man, I play music, and I was invited um, to do a workshop, an art workshop uh, at your college, which is quite an honor to be here. Um, so what we are going to do is, uh, first I'd like to introduce the work I do. I've been, for many years I spent uh, carving, uh, direct, direct stone carving, um, stone. Um, that's the way a lot of sculptures were done for thousands of years. If you, if you like uh, point the camera towards there, you will see actually one of the great stone carvings of um, a Morgan. Would you be able to just go down there? Over now the here. great stone carvings of the Aztec world. That and that was done, uh, that egg stone carving is uh, literally you grab a a chisel and a hammer, and you begin carving. And so, um, so that's one great, that, that, that's not at the Aztec calendar, it's actually the cosmos of, of, um, of the Aztec world, of the pre-Hispanic world for the Aztecs. And so I was very inspired with a lot of those, that stuff to create this kind of um, artwork. And I just very briefly, I show you what I have in a garden, and, um, I will just go to the garden um, here, and this is one of the one of the stones. It's called Acrobat. It's a great piece. I love it. I did it in 2008, 2007. This is another one called Bird. Someone is looking at a mirror, and at the same time, it's having like a baby here, it's like mm -hmm. wearing a baby. Um, this is more abstract with a lot of faces. Um, it's called Todos los Santos. It's together with this, and um, this is a marble from Iraq. It's a red stone, very beautiful stone, and also has all kinds of faces. It's called Todos los Santos, all saints. And this final one too. There's an American Indian mask at the bottom, and a Mexican Teotihuacan mask at the bottom. They're all together, both together, and they bear this. Um, angels or faces or people. So what that's, you know, that one piece. These are other pieces that I've done. This is a mother and child, and this is an upside down uh, piece. They're all acrobats, I call them. Uh, this is a great one too, more like ornamental. And see, this is uh, called Seventh Avenue, and it's an upside down acrobat. And this is a close-up of the other piece. And so that's pretty much it. I just wanna, wanted you to see this, this work. So um, am I back to the camera or? Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to just very briefly talk about um, the artist that we are exploring today. His name is Jose Guadalupe Posada. And that's his name. He was uh, active in the uh, uh, late 19th century and uh, early, early 20th century, right when the revolution began in Mexico. Um, in the late 19th century, there was not a lot of photography yet. So people to document what, what happened in, in the, in the um, well, this is the, 
the bust of, of, uh, of Posada before I go on. But in order for people to document what happened, the way photography or videos uh, used, are used now, back then the printmakers would do graphics. And this is a great event, that's the Haley Comet, that I think it was 1904 or 1903, okay. and it passed through Mexico. It scared the, the living lights out of everyone, and, and he is just, uh, you know, he's portraying that. So, so that was the job of the, of the, of the illustrator or the printmaker, you know, social events. Uh, this is funny because all the girls have mustache, so it's making a kind of a mark of something. Uh, we have booth fights, you know, so the, and the incidents of the day, you know. Um, like this one, when I cut it, something happened, and, and that's put in the newspaper. Then um, in the day, um, they will also come with little pasquines or, or magazines of the happening of the day. And Posada began, um, with this idea, began depicting things that were happening um, daily. An event, an invitation, a party. Um, and so he, he would put corridos when the revolution started. People started writing words for, for what was happening through corridos in the war. And so he would put them there and put drawings. So the revolution was a big, a big event for, for artists and obviously for the life of Mexico. It was a very violent event. And so and that influenced um, Posada in his work. You know, the people, you know, it was a really a true popular revolution. And so you have peasants really uprising. Now, if you combine that with the Mexican past, this is a Zompantli or a place where skulls were put in the, in the temples. And if you combine that with the colonial, our colonial past, Mexico was, was a colony of Spain. We inherited a lot of their culture. Um, then you will have the humor and satire of, of, the, of the Posada's work. And here is one, you know, a Mexican with his harape, is a skull, he's drinking mezcal, you know, so he begins with that. And, and um, so Posada just began using skulls with the satire of the revolution. The guy in, the, in this big beer looks like Venustiano Carranza, one of the uh, presidents in the, when the revolution almost ended. But he is like kind of making fun of a lot of stuff. Um, it's a political commentary. And in any rate, um, there's calls. Here is really funny. This is, you know, whatever happened is like a warrior. And here we have another one. He has a machete. He's ready to scare everybody. Um, and so combine that with a great celebration of Mexico called it the Day of the Dead. Now everything just became together. So Posada is remembered as influencing that. He's also remembered as, a, as an artist who influenced focusing on Mexico itself to make art. Then the rest of the artists, Diego Rivera, the muralist, and everybody else followed. So he's considered in many ways the, the, the main uh, influence of modern art in Mexico. And, um, and that's the last example here, is Diego Rivera's painting. Um, where he has one of his uh, Guadalupe's Catrinas and that's himself, uh, Jose Guadalupe, next to him, as a very important person. Uh, yes, come Hi. in, please. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> yeah, great. So we have these two newcomers. I'm, I'm, I just introduced my work, and I'm introducing the work of this great artist. His name is Jose Guadalupe Posada, and he I'm going to backtrack just a little bit to give a little bit of background of, of our artists. Um, so just very briefly, Posada was an artist who, who portrayed, you know, incidents like in, uh, uh, through his drawings and printmaking. And um, thank you for coming. Um, so what it is through social satire and, and documenting what happened daily in Mexico, he ended up, you know, doing 
coming up with very original ideas, you know, um, and also using his, using some kind of um, daily uh, newspaper, very cheap paper, um, to print, you know, things that would happen in the city, including songs. So I was mentioning that in Mexico, but exactly when he was working, 90, early 1900s, the revolution took place. That was a big influencer of uh, his art and uh, obviously in Mexico's life was a big change. Uh, not like the civil war in the United States. Uh, very violent. Um, so what we have here, you, you have the revolution, the pre-Hispanic life of Mexico, the, the past, our early cultures. Um, you can see that the, the over there is an Aztec calendar in that, you know, poster. Um, and so with our cultural heritage from Spain, um, Posada came up with these great ideas of using skulls as attire, you know, as, as making fun of government, making fun of things, you know. Um, so, and that's a, the main thing. He started using the skull and dancing, having a social life, and that became really, you know, very attractive for people. So together with something that we have in Mexico called the Day of the Dead, you probably heard of it, um, that combined became a very important thing. And now, you know, um, uh, the skulls of Jose Guadalupe Posada and the Day of the Dead just kind of mingle put together um, to make this kind of iconography. In any rate, um, this is again, part, uh, and you're right, it's Jose Guadalupe Posada, that's the artist. This is the Catrini, one of his major caricature cartoons of a, of a high-class woman. And, um, and then we have um, the other painters. Uh, there's Frida Kahlo there, um, and other uh, great writer, Jose Vasconcelos. In any rate, today we're going to, we're going to draw, inspired on, on, on Posada. Let me just come back here so I get to draw that. On, um, we're going to draw a skull, and I thought we can draw a skull of a skater. So that's what we're going to do. So at home, you have a paper and pencil and an eraser. That will be perfect. Erasers I'm not that crazy about. Uh, you can always uh, go back with your line. Um, but we're going to start. Um, and then I have a poster there, but we can move it closer. or we can go there to draw. Oh, the poster there? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but, but I think we'll see how we do here. Yeah. And if you want, I will repeat it. I was thinking we would have a larger crowd. But maybe that this is enough. That's so fine. Maybe, yeah. um, so, we can so, follow on the screen. Yeah, yeah. So in any rate, um, this is the presentation. We can move now to, to this camera. And if we can, is there something I should do? No, we have a direct connection okay. here. Oh, the panel, yeah. OK, so here is the drawing I traced it, so it'll be easier. Um, but maybe we can start over. Actually, I'm going to make it center a little bit better. And. Um, yeah. So are you ready? I'm going to use a, mar a marker, but you can start with a pencil, OK? Then there's markers and colors, and we'll start coloring, OK? So that's your paper is a regular size paper. Mine is a little bit bigger, um, but any paper will do. This looks great. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so the form of the skull, that's how we're going to start. And we're going to start just doing we're going to do like a mushroom. Like if you can do, think of a mushroom like this, a little dwarfy mushroom. We got it, yeah. And we're thinking about the upper part of your paper, right? The upper part is that we're starting working. We're going to move down from there into the, the shape of the, of the skeleton, OK? Good. Now we're going to do the, the lower maxillar 
Oh, I'm getting very anatomical. Um, the lower jaw. <laughs> Good. And the teeth. I'm going to do two here and two on the side. And little teeth down here too. So now we're going to go for the eyes. The nose, the nose cavity is like a triangle. There we have a skull. We're going to decide if we want a woman, man, or mix, whatever you like to do, um, a little later. But now we're going to just concentrate on the shape of our, of our skull. And it's actually a fissure. So anyway, from here we're going to do the, ver the, the, the neck, like the vertebras of the neck. Like T, like that. No, I said it No? I guess it's hard. What is up? You can always do the, the video later. I'm going to go and check on you, Mr. Mehmet. I know, I know. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I'm sure it's good. I'm just kidding. Um, so we're going to do like in this upper part of the, of the, like, but we know our shoulders, and then there's the sternum here, if we can call it that way. It's, it looks like a little tie. And it doesn't have to look like mine. Follow the spirit of what you're doing, what we're doing. Um, this is this, the, the pencil sketch, you can see it. I'm redoing it again, and I may retrace this one, just, just to have to. Now we're going to do the the chest, the thorax, the, the rib bones. The ribs are here like 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 that. And then that's fairly easy. We just do one and another one and another one. Like this. And then there's some ribs that are floating. Like that. And in order to have this beautiful play, we're gonna do the last vertebrae, that, you know, the column like this, going this way. So we have like a little S. Can I see? How are you doing? Yeah, now you, you, you throw this guy down like that, this way. Good. Nice. Nice. Good. Okay. Yay, good. <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna need a little bit of space. Or or just yeah, like this. Yeah. No, we all are. That's like such a challenge. <laughs> we need more paper. But you can fit it in there if you like or use the next paper. But I have some tape. We can take the goats. Okay. So I don't want to go too fast, so we go slowly. Um, now here we're going to do what we know as the hip bone. It's like a little butterfly. So we're going to go like this. And like that. For drasma, we think it's easier, or it looks easier, but it took, it took, it took some practice. But, it, but I've learned also that, especially I work with little kids, or younger kids or, or teenagers, they have a tendency to really be very open and easy. So as long as it doesn't have to look like mine, as long as it's something like that and you're happy with it, we're fine. You know. Um, now comes the the legs. We're gonna do the legs one like that. So we're gonna do the first bone, the upper bone. I think it's called the femur, and then some bo the little bones of the knees and the other bone going down like this. And here we have the other leg kind of going this way. Can you slide it over a bit? So. Oops, sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. Yes. Thank you.
And then we're going to do the skateboard. So the skateboard is like a line. It's kind of covering, kind of covering the legs a little bit because it goes this way. And it has that shape like a, like a beam, half a beam. And then we're going to do the edge of our skateboard like that. If you need to raise, you can. But you know, then we, you have markers available to you, and then you're going to trace it with your marker. OK? Let me see how we're doing. I'm not, no judgment, OK? Good. You're doing excellent. Yeah. Yeah, this is good, because then you can gonna, or you can make yours longer, just a little longer. Yeah. Just like that. And this other one is going to go, like this appears into the bottom here. Nice. Yeah. Good. I love it. <laughs> I love her. Good. OK. Nice. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is very good. Let me get you some tape for that. No, don't worry about it. We'll get it later. Oh, Aurelio, that's just draw. Good. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this is fun. Um, now we're going to do the wheels of our skateboard. And the wheels are very simple. Like um, I did one this way, like a little moon, and the other a bigger moon because it's closer to us. And then we're going to do the axis of the wheel and then another circle complete. And then you just do a moon like that. Got it? I'm going to repeat the same thing here. So here we're going to roll the axis of the, those wheels and a circle and then a moon. Good, so we're almost done with our with a basic skull. Like we're gonna draw his his arm. So he's kind of really like saying hello or having fun with with his arms. It's the upper arm and then the elbow and then another bone going up. I like how Posada just makes it very simple to draw this. Um, it's really amazing how it makes it easy just to draw. And now we're going to do the finger bones. We can't see it. Oh, okay. oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Good. OK. Thank you. So that's your finger bones. And the other one we're going to do, he is actually reaching out to his board. And he's holding he's holding his skateboard with his hand on the other. I like to draw like a hat or like a scarf or a do-rag. Whatever you like to do here, we can do it. Um, we can do like a little do right thing. <laughs> and um, if you like to do hair, you can do a bone or you can do a, a ribbon. What you like is, is good. Now, um, in the bottom we can, it's really our take, but I'm going to wait a little bit on that for the bottom part. Let's do one, one another skater upside down in this area. Um, so I'm going to move it. This is going to be going a little out. 
But before that, I want to see how everybody did with the skull. So, with the cold skeleton. How are you doing? Good. You're doing great. And now use this leg, which remember is going up and then down. Like it goes up, this way, and then down, and this one here. And if you want, then draw the, draw the skin. Yeah. Let me see. Oh, so, he's so charming. <laughs> Dr. Mehmet. He's the most charming skull ever. <laughs> now you can do durag, a hat, um, I like the idea sombrero de tres pedradas. You know? <laughs> Sombrero de cinco pi tres cinco, picos. Cinco pedradas, ¿no? De tres picos. That's a famous hat from Veracruz, Mexico. Um, okay, so next we are going to draw um, our skull upside down. Another skeleton uh, doing a pirouette. And maybe we'll draw that, that artifact that skeletons use that helps them move like that. I'm gonna draw that here. Maybe we'll have space here to draw a little bit of the city or the countryside, whichever, like mountains or whichever thing you like to add down here. But up here, we're going to do an upside down scope. So we're gonna do the same but upside down. I'm wondering if you're ready for me, so I'm gonna wait a little more. Show it to the crowd. <laughs> 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 let, me, let me show you. <laughs> okay, this is a green one. I think we're doing fantastic. Look at this one. And I love the perspective. He's really like in the front, and this is in the back. So as soon as you do these kinds of things, it's a little hot. He needs the other arm to harass him out, but we're doing perfect. Very good work. Dr. Craig. Um. <laughs> yeah, you guys can also see, you know, everybody else's work. Look at this one. That's Dr. Meme. And he's ready to do the offset on scope. Very cool. I know his feeling. He needs a harana. He needs a harana, <laughs> musical instrument. Yes, that's a musical instrument that Mehmet plays. So that would be, that would be fun to draw. Um, maybe on the next call you can put, he's just getting to play the harana upside down. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to see. Oh yes, of course. Your name is? Drew. Drew? D-R-E-W. Yeah. It's a beautiful name. Okay, this is Drew's. I love her hair. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. And it has a nice feeling that it's flying up and smiling. I love his hands. It's a he, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Good work. Good work. So we are ready to add more things. Um, and. Katrina. Okay, this is Katrina's. 
that's awesome. She, she draws in her own time and does it very carefully. I noticed she has a very careful way of draftsmanship. And many draftsmen are like that, and I admire that, and it's looking good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very good. Very good. Yeah, and yes. Okay, so we're ready to draw our upside down score. Um, Drew decided to put the piece upside down and then draw it normal, but I'm going to do it this way, okay? But you can follow us as you feel more comfortable. Um, so what we're doing, we're going to do that motion again. We're going to do something. We're going to do the lower jaw, and, and we're going to do the eye. So from here we, we go with the neck. I'm gonna draw a neck going this way. A little bit of the beginning of the upper part of the shoulder and the sternum, and then the rib cage like that. I'm kind of playing with it. I have it here. I have it here in pencil. So he's going this way, and the legs are coming that way. So now we're going to draw the, the last of the or the vertebra or the column. And again, draw this little butterfly of the which is the pelvic bone that holds kind of the body together. We're gonna go one leg like this. That's one foot, and maybe the other one going this way. Now we need his arms here. Hope I'm not going too fast. So now we need the arms. I'm gonna do one arm this way. Kind of running out of paper too. And the other arm this way. Maybe his skateboard is going this way. I can repeat that again. If you like me to repeat it in, the, in this other one. I'll leave it like that. Okay. I would use. I just use it. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. I think the technique work, is working out. And now you just need to decide where the class can go up and down. This is a little dark. Can we turn on the lights here? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll it. Uh, yeah. Some work. Hidden somewhere. Um, 1976. I'll, I'll do it. You, you, you. Okay. Thank you. So with unit two, we have the two. We can add a few more things. We can add, I would say, buildings of the city. Or that would be up to you. What, what would you like to add? What would be a good thing? Thank you. Yeah, we were a little dark. <laughs> I hope this doesn't alter the, the video. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. Ah, there we go. I can do the, the dark of the eyes. We can do a song. Now that's my contribution. Would anybody like to add to the sky? What would you like to put? Another skull, just a skull. Um, oh, clouds. Birds, clouds, one cloud here. So that's beginning to get to feel our own, all the whole space. Um, what about at the bottom? We can do a building, we can do mountains, like I see the landscape of. Purchase Community College is all green and, well, now mountains and trees. Yeah, we can put some mountains. Okay, let's do mountains here. Did that come out, our upside down fellow? <laughs> well, it came out. I couldn't get them all, but uh, <laughs> we'll get the idea. We'll have another paper. Yeah. <laughs> I it's abstract art. We can imagine. <laughs> um, it's abstract art. We can imagine what I, I work oh, with there. It's very good. It's very beautiful. <laughs> what else should we add? Is there anything in particular? A building? Maybe a tree? <laughs> you can draw tree. buildings. Oh, okay. And trees. A dead tree. A dead tree. No. Oh my God, how would the with skulls on the tree. <laughs> Let's do that one. Oh my God. Let's see. There is room Skeleton there. tree. Well, we can put like like skulls down here. How do I draw planes? A plane? Flames. Oh, flames. Okay, here. Let's see. Flames will be, I don't know, like grass, like that. Then the color will be, will do it. It looks like fingers. Thank you. You can do one like this. They come like shaped like feathers, a little bit more like that. Actually, this isn't, this is this isn't as good. But I would say, flame will be like. 
moves like I guess. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good work. I'm going to put some here to my Maybe I'm going to do some buildings here. Just add a little, a few more things for our background. And then this should go a little lower. There we go. Good. You can always you can always do the upside down person. I I can should I go with it with you again or what? Oh no. You're okay? Yeah. Can I start coloring it? Yes. Now you got colors and that's the, this is the fun part. When it's uh we are a little bit more free. I put some colors in your desks. I can bring more. There are colors here. I'm gonna put more colors in there. I think it can make the tree better. That's nice, and you can no, that's good. You can start hanging sc little skulls here, the way you did it here. Oh, okay. You can add. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, idea. that's good. Don't worry. Actually, it's a very original tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's no, almost too original. <laughs> so, so. Very good. So your choice, if you like to trace with one marker, you can trace. And I can't wait to show the audience what you've been doing, because that's very beautiful. Um, so you can start tracing if you like to trace. That's a good, you have some markers here. It's a great marker. Or you can start coloring, so it's, it's up to you. But uh, yeah, you, need, you can always catch up or do it later, or you can start coloring. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it person. Oh, OK. Good. So if you want to add something good, or you can start placing, I'll bring more, okay. more of those markers. Thank you. Yes, yes.
for our coloring part, we can use we can use you can use markers, you can use colors. I think color is a beautiful thing to use uh, to learn. You probably know your coloring, um, your own style, or your own touch. What what is coloring is up to you. Um, Some people like to press a lot. Children like to really press strong. You know, I, um, I like to teach them that you also can do very soft coloring too. Um, very light, you know, a little bit like that. Like doing a little bit of the background like that. So I actually am starting a little bit with just background, which is very easy because there's not a lot of thought to it. You just get this kind of, how do you call like this kind of texture that you use for the whole thing. And it doesn't have to be super perfect. I like it like that. So that's one one color to take care of. We can use the green of the of the of the mountains here and Dutch College. And the Hudson Valley. We can draw the river there. It kind of becomes local to our own place that we are. Um, Maybe I scared a skateboard in red. Ooh, I, I have this pink marker. I'm gonna go with it. So right now it's the freedom of how you like to color, where, and, and uh, that's a beautiful part of it. This is the most fun part. So I'm gonna do these wheels in green. Mm. I'm gonna do my skateboard in purple. my red brick buildings. So this is an opportunity just to, just to lay things. Um, so people like to do a lot of planning. I believe in just doing, being spontaneous and color and just go for, for the feeling of it and see what you have access to and just use it, you know. Um, I need a yellow, okay. Let me this. This will be brown, the skateboard. See, everybody really getting involved in the, in the project, I love it. 
let's see if we can show some of it, some of everybody's work. I love the planes. So I love the sensibility of color, and I see that um, Drew and Catherine, Catherine, Katrina, is uh, they are doing like a very just meticulous light coloring as they go, and I love that. I'm kind of like not rushing it, but but doing strong color so you can see it in the image. But it's nice to be very light. A little a little bit of how I did the background. But I will be more slower in how I approach that. The way Katrina and Andrew are doing it. Let's see, can I, if you'd like me to show some of the work that you're doing. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> Feel free if you want to show it. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> this is green. I love it in pencil. I like um, Dr. Mehmet is doing it all in color pencils and pencils. And that's very beautiful and sensible. I'm going to show it a little bit like a movie and going sideways. It's like a story, what he has. Look at the tree with skulls. And that's the landscape. And that's fun. That is very, very beautiful. Thank you. Morgan, next time you draw, maybe you can watch the video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of this brown color. skateboard I like the idea of that tree and um, what Dr. Lemet did is that he added a, a, a piece of paper to the side so that's not a bad idea you feel like you can continue adding to the story or to the to the moment and uh, yeah that, that is very good This is a great camera. Just a little yellow to brighten up things a little bit more. Kind of outlining the 
the skulls in, with my yellow colors, or anything that is brighter or warm, so they can come out. So it's like a, a, very much like making a figure, but instead of a person, it's uh, using lines as the bones, and, and it's amazing how we usually are afraid of saying oh, we're going to draw a person and we are no good, but with this, you kind of see the essence of form and get away with it because they are skulls or, or skeletons, rather. So I'm just aligning this in yellow so that it, they shine out a little more. The other way to do it is to do it as if it was night and have a moon and the background dark will make the white glow. But that's why I'm doing I'm doing yellow, a yellow back here. You can add all the colors here, you can color the skulls. I like them white. I can do um, something around them, like the, the same way I color. Maybe I'll use this pink. I love this pink color. So right now we're just touching up and, and finishing it off with different, you know, designs and colors and whatnot. So now I'm doing, adding some more color, the mountains, it's cutting, cut, kind of touching up everything. There they are. How's everybody doing with coloring? Good. So we can, this part that we can do a lot at home too. Um, but I see, Dr. Greg, can I show? Very beautiful. I like the stream, that's the Hudson River. <laughs> okay, this is a very lively composition. Uh, look at the skull upside down and his hat. That's very, that's a very beautiful touch. Uh, can, we, can we say what is this? It's a what? It's a virus hat. It's a virus hat. It's pirates. Oh, the pirates. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. They play like the pirates. 
The Yankees are doing very well. They won again yesterday. <laughs> and this is a windmill also? That's a windmill. A windmill? Good. And um, what is this? The donde? Do you have a teleferico in, in? No, no, this, this is an imaginary place. Nice, <laughs> like uh, all the schools are traveling here. Okay, good. I love the city. This is a river. I will see the Hudson River. I love he looks like a pirate more than anything. Very beautiful. And I like his love. I, think I kind of did like very bright colors myself. I like his kindness, more gentle approach to drawing. Very good. Very, very terrific. And I like the telemedical and the red. I remember the one we had uh, in 59th Street in Manhattan, crossing into Roosevelt Island. Remember that? Yes, yes. Roosevelt Island. You like me to share? Let me know, and I can always. If you want to. Can I? You can show your progress, so people are more encouraged to and see how you're doing. Yes, good. So, Drew has been doing flames, and the guy is kind of not caring. He's still skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I like this blue color, and you know the skull upside down, and the skeleton is kind of having fun, and. I love her hair. So it's, a, it's still in progress. It's very beautiful. I love that approach. Thank you. Oh, I know that you're blue, Lamanda. Dr. Meme, how are we doing? I'm trying to draw a beret, but I don't know how to draw a beret. <laughs> a beret, that's a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, let's see if I can draw one. Yeah. Let me. Beret. Like I don't know the way the French man do. Let's see, I, I'll get another piece of paper. They have like, they're like, uh, like this, and um, a little bit like that. So if the head is like this, would that be like a beret, Yeah, that looks sort of like a beret. Like the Basque, the Basque have this. And you can do it red, like the Basque. The Basque, that's a, a community and a nation in northern Spain. Um, so we have his lower. So that was his very, you can even, I'm gonna color it red. Did this help a moment? Yeah, that moment? Looks like a bullfighter too. Like a toreador. <laughs> so, Part of the, the soap, the eye sucks, um, always darken them, then you get a better effect of the score. I'm gonna do it. And like in anything, um, nothing is like final. You can always do another one and get better at doing, for example, the, the cage, you know, and have it have, make it have more action, you know. Um, here I'm running a little bit out of space, but what I do, here I'm doing the pelvic bone and the hands.
very beautiful. I like this. It's like this is like a stage. Yeah. Nice. Good. 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 Here, I will say, look at the arm. The arms are really long. So it will be extended a little bit. It will feel like a little bit. But she's short. Oh, there you go. Okay. No, no. If it works, it works. Do you like his lineup? That's, that's his hair? Yeah. Yeah. I give him a lineup. Nice. That's a bar. Yeah. Yeah, very good. <laughs> the larger poster, but will that, that won't be necessary, um, I believe. So with, with this, we get the idea. So um, should we close up? OK. Well, if we have much time, do we have like two minutes to close up? Sure. Um, so um, again, one thing too is that nothing is final. You can always redo it with different colors and, and uh, add uh, people moving in different directions um, with the skateboards and um, like Mehmet putting uh, a tree with skulls or a house with skulls here. You can play with the whole thing and, and just continue. With the one that you're working, I will say just work on the background. Um, Drew and Katrina are working on their own pace. And that's what, once it's finished, it's a beautiful thing. You can show it to your teachers or share it online, um, which is a good thing to do. It's always good. And um, share the story of, of today's workshop. Um, so thank you again. Thank you very much for allowing me here. Uh, Dr. Memen, thank you for your invitation. Uh, well, thank you, Aurelio. Um, um, just to close up, uh, Aurelio Del Muro uh, did, a, again, a fascinating presentation about Jose uh, Guadalupe Posada uh, and use that as an inspiration for the artwork that we did today. Uh, and I hope you all were, had a chance to enjoy it, so thank you for coming. Uh, and I hope thank you, you at home also had a chance to try your hand at the drawing. Um, what would you say is a final comment uh, about why, why did Posada go into you know, drawing skulls? Why do you think he, he, he brought that out in daily life? Well, it's a way that I do. In I think he's surrounded by a culture that, that also schools are, are a, kind of an important icon. Mm -hmm. and, um, and when he happened again to be in the middle of a, of a terrible war, and um, to make fun of it, to have an aspect of the Mexican culture also, to kind of make fun of, of death, of this scary thing, which is scary for all of us, is a, is a very enlightened kind of thing to use. And so that's why he became very, very well known because of the use of the skull as a fun part. So, yeah. so in a way, you know, we're taking, we're looking at daily life, and we're, you know, taking a lighthearted and funny view of daily life by uh, showing skeletons living daily life. And I, that was the idea of Posada, also particularly at that time where, obviously, revolution and violence was all over political uncertainty and stability. Social class differences were very marked, right? So he he drew high class events by uh, by using skeletons. So it was a way to also poke fun at the at the rich in Mexican society as well, in the time of, of course, much upheaval. Uh, so thank you. And so with that inspiration, we did our artwork today. Um, so thank you again, and that gives us a sense of the Day of the Dead as a way to sort of uh, look at death and try to take the scariness out of death and, uh, and as a way to, to uh, enjoy life, right? So it's a way to, uh, to, uh, take the, to make life uh, more enjoyable and uh, less fearful, right? Uh, so thank you again, Aurelio Del Muro, for really a wonderful workshop. I could feel my blood pressure going down as I was drawing everything, you know, doing the work. So I can, now I understand the whole thing about art therapy, actually. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So, um, just to want to remind you, there are more events for uh, Hispanic Heritage Month next Thursday, September 30th. Andres Tapia Ursua, 
who's a, a director, a filmographer, uh, who's been working on a documentary uh, which documents the lives of, uh, of Latino, Latinx people in the city of Pittsburgh, their lives, on a sort of very intimate level uh, to create and foster greater understanding across communities. And so he's going to present a part of his documentary next uh, Thursday, September 30th, starting at 6 in the evening. That will be live streamed again at www.sunyduchess.edu slash live. So please uh, check the calendar. You can check it online uh, if you have, don't have, have one. Uh, and please join us next week for uh, a fascinating documentary uh, to get the intimate, uh, for people sharing their intimate stories of their lives with us. Um, I think it will be very enlightening, eye-opening, um, and humanizing as well. So please join us. Further events down the road, Tuesday, October 5th, Super Mambo, of e an evening of music and conversation. This, uh, the incredible uh, musicians um, honoring the spirit of Tito Puente. Please join us for that. Wednesday, October 30th, uh, Rachel McGibbons, uh, writer, poet, activist, playwright, essayist of Mexican descent will do sort of slam poetry and mm. highlight the Mexican experience, Mexican American experience in, uh, through through that. Uh, and uh, our last event, Learn to Bomba with Dr. Drum. This is a live event. Will also be live streamed, but in the Washington Quad, we will. It will be a dance workshop, Learning to Bomba. Uh, hopefully, you can make it to that. So we had we had a, a fascinating discussion about Bomba on Tuesday, and this will be an opportunity to physically be involved with Bomba. Uh, 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 a rich tradition uh, and art uh, from Puerto Rico, of course, live here in New York and other places uh, in the United States. Please, so if you can make it, please try to come. Please participate in these events. They're for you. Um, and I think they're really fascinating, eye-opening, um, and uh, wonderful. And fun. So thank you. I'm Mehmet Kichukazar. I'm Associate Professor of Sociology here. Um, I'm the co-chair of Hispanic Heritage Month. You can always contact me or come by and see me as well. Uh, so, thank you again for joining us. You're on camera. <laughs>